Hello everyone, this is Akash here from BlenderSkew.cf and in this Blender text effect tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this wavy text effect in Blender. So as you can see, there are two texts in this and there's a separation of like a wavy pattern. So if you see this, it, it looks really simple, okay? But if you go to Blender and then start creating this, it's it's a bit tough, you know, you will start uh, modeling it manually these ways, but it's, it's not that simple. So I found a very, very simple way to do this. And so I thought to share it with you. So I'm going to create this in Blender version 2.76 and the Cycles Render Engine for this. So open up Blender. Yeah, this one. Uh, file new, reload sub file, file new, Blender scene. So start by deleting the cube by pressing X and then delete. And we are going to bring that cube back. Uh, so let's start by adding in the text. So press Shift A, select text. Rotate it by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Okay, so now we have our text. Change the text by pressing the Tab key and then change the text. I'm going to write Wave in uppercase. And uh, just going to drag out this panel to view more properties. Go to the object data which has this F icon for the text. Come down and change the alignment to center. So now our text is center aligned. Now, as you can see, I have used a bold font for this text effect because it looks good. You can see the waves properly if you're using a very bold font. If you use the default Blender font, I don't think get that nice, uh, get that kind of an effect. Just going to change the font to some bold font. So I'm going to open this regular uh, open button over here to change the font. So I'm going to load in the font which I have. Yeah, it's here. And I'm going to select open font. So this is the font here. I'm going to change this extrude value to 0.1 so that we have some uh, yeah, some geometry to the text. Some, it, it makes it more 3D, I guess. So I'm just then I'm going to just decrease this preview resolution a bit till around about 5. 5 is fine. So you, you need to you know experiment this value so that it is proper with your font. Your, your, your text shouldn't look a bit different or awkward so it's it's nice for my font I guess it's fine five yeah so this is the text now our text is ready I'm just gonna press shift D to duplicate it and then move it into the last letter by pressing M and then zero uh, in case if we want to do something else with that so we can just you know use it it, it really doesn't matter much but it's okay and then now let's add in the cube so press shift a mesh cube so the cube is back uh, so I'll come in the front view and then the orthographic view. Come in the wireframe mode by pressing the Z key. Scale the cube by pressing S and Z. Make it around about half the text size. And scale in the X to just fit in the text about this much. And come in the uh, and then we need to scale in the Y axis by pressing S and Y. And then around about this much should be fine. That's fine. Okay, I'm gonna hide the text for now by selecting it and pressing H to hide it. I'm in the edit mode of the cube by pressing the tab key, press Ctrl R to add in some loop cuts. So I'm using my scroll wheel to increase the number of loop cuts. I'm, I'm gonna put 30 loop cuts and just click and then escape just to, you know, uh, uh, just to uh, set all the vertices and then Ctrl R. And then over here, you should add only two, uh, no, I guess one is fine. No, two vertices should be fine. Uh, two loop cuts, not vertices. Yeah, that's fine. So that we get some kind of square face, okay? Nice square face. So the cube is ready for all the modifiers and stuff, which I'm gonna add later on. Let's bring back the text, so press Alt Edge. So the text is back. Uh, select the cube. Go to the modifiers, add modifier, and then select the wave modifier to add in some waves to the cube. I'm also going to add a sub surf modifier or the subdivision surface modifier. Move it up, change it to be 2 so that we have some more subdivisions. Should be above the wave modifier. So, this is the wave modifier here. We have a whole lot of controls, but I think uh, we only need these for sliders over here and uh, uncheck Y okay we don't want this Y so uncheck Y yeah so now you can see we can properly see this uh, nice wavy kind of pattern but we can make it more better using these four sliders over here 
So I'm just gonna decrease the narrowness of the waves a bit. Or increase, yeah, increase the narrowness, then decrease it. Increase the speed. And uh, then width. Decrease, whoa. Decrease the width. So you can see you can get more waves like that. Increase the height. I'm gonna change the speed to be 10. It's not gonna make much difference, but uh, I think it works good. Uh, decrease the narrowness of it. Decrease the increase the width a bit. You know, you need to experiment with all these values. You know, it's it's all just you know experimenting with different values. So I think this is fine. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay, this much you can just move it a bit down. I guess it's too up. That's fine. So hopefully you should get this kind of a wavy pattern. You can you know just experiment with these values. You should get some nice waves. So now we have this text and this is the cube. We don't want this cube to you know render uh, come into the render. So we're gonna hide it. But we want the nice wavy pattern to appear on the text. So how do we do that? Well, there's a modifier called boolean. Now uh, this boolean modifier is great for this kind of a text effect. So if you come in the front view, select the text, press add modifier, and actually I guess this is a text, right? Yeah, this is a text. So we're gonna convert this to a mesh first so that we can add in all those modifiers. So press Alt C, mesh from curve with a self text. Come into the edit mode by pressing the tab key. Select all the vertices by pressing A and then press W so it remove doubles. This is important because uh, uh, it helps the boolean modifier. I don't know, without removing the doubles, I guess boolean modifier doesn't work properly. So let's go ahead and remove it, come out of the edit mode, and add modifier, and then boolean. I'm going to come in the front view and then the wireframe mode. Now over here in this object, change it to be cube. Now, as you can see, I have just selected cube and you can see that the, uh, the operation should be intersect. And you can see now the uh, the upper part of the text is you know it's not there now it's just removed while the portion of the text which was you know inside the cube has got this nice wavy pattern on top so it looks good now if i change this operation to be difference you can see it's the reverse effect so the text which was inside the cube is now just you know removed while the other portion of the text with that nice wavy pattern is still there so now we can use this kind of, you know, a modifier system to achieve the wavy text effect. So uh, I'm going to change the operation to be intersect again so that we have this uh, the below portion of the text, which is which was inside the cube uh, uh, to be visible. And then I'm going to duplicate the text by pressing shift D and escape key. I don't move it. Just change the operation to be difference. So now we have the text on top as well as a bottom. So if I just you know hide this um, cube over here, so this cube I'm just gonna name it uh, wave I guess over here. I'm gonna hide it by clicking on this eye icon and this camera icon so it doesn't even render. So as you can see, we have a text. Now there's a pro there's a problem over here. You can see all these you know joints uh, between the text we are to text so how do we fix that well you can do that with the uh, edge split modifier so add modifier edge split you do that for both of the text so add modifier edge split as you can see now it's barely noticeable the it looks like it was the you know the same text but now we have that nice wavy pattern at the bottom so you can uh, don't apply the boolean or the edge split modifier in case you edit the wave or this cube again uh, you can, you know, again, you know, see the changes. So if I were to change this wave a bit, I can increase the uh, width a bit, you know, like this. Make it 0.15, not 0 0.15, 0 0.2. Now it's again experimenting, 0.25. Yes, that should be fine. And, you know, again, you can see the changes. So it, it updates really quickly. I guess it's way too up. Now move it a bit more down yeah that's fine so you can see the waves properly now and uh, that looks good I might you know change it again point three i guess point three is just fine i don't care yeah i'm gonna hide it okay so as you can see it's pretty similar to the 
uh, final result and now we can start with the materials so uh, come in the cycles rendering engine and then come to the materials tab make sure text is selected and click on this new button so um, now we have added in a new material yeah and then i'm just gonna move the cube a bit more down because the wave is way too much yeah just around this much yeah that's fine so now i'm just gonna change this diffuse color i'm not gonna you know give too much uh, to the uh, material i'm just gonna add in a mix shader node so change the diffuse surface to be mix shader first shader to be diffuse second shader to be glossy and then i'm gonna change the diffuse color to be slightly creamish kind of color okay we can see the preview here so uh, fac to be 0.1 and then roughness uh, point zero 0.05 and then the color of the roughness also should uh, I mean the glossy should also be a bit creamish and I'm going to change this viewport color uh, I'll just drop this viewport color to this uh, uh, the diffuse color to the viewport so I can see it so as you can see now the top text is got this nice creamish color select the bottom text I'm just going to give the give it the same material just click on this two button and I'm going to change this diffuse to be more darkish, uh, a bit more brownish color, you know, saturated and then much more darkish. A um, bit more glossy also. It's fine, I believe, yeah. I'm just going to drop this color to this. Now we have the materials. It's really, very really simple and you can see it looks good now. Okay, so um, now let's set up the lighting and the background. For the background, I'm going to use a plane. So press Shift A, Mesh, Plane. Rotate the plane by pressing R, then X, 90, and enter. Scale it by pressing S, then 100, and enter. And then come in the Worlds panel to change the Worlds color to be around about, you know, gray. Okay, not dark gray, it should be a uh, gray. <laughs> then I'm going to come in the front view. And then press Ctrl Alt Number Pad Zero to snap the camera into place. So I'm gonna just gonna move it here, bit up, just to position the camera. Is it plain? Yeah, plain is fine. I'm just gonna move it a bit back. Yeah, that's fine. And in the front view, select the lamp, press G, and then place it over here. Come in the object data, which has this lamp icon for the lamp. And then change the size to be around about 0.3. Use nodes. Strength of the emission to be 1750. Um, just gonna move it front. This plane, this lamp over here. I'm just gonna move it down there. Let's see how it looks rendered. That looks good. Yeah, that, yeah, that looks good, right? Um, so yeah, that's it, I believe. I'm just gonna increase the soft, uh, the size of the lamp to point. 4 point 0.5 let's try point 0.5 yeah that's nice there's a lot of noise so i'm just gonna use this reflective and refractive caustics so light paths in the render panel and check reflective and refractive caustics let's get rid of all this noise so yeah that's the uh, i guess that's the you know scene ready and now we can give it a render so i'm just gonna save it pressing ctrl s just gonna select the directory, name the file, and then save it. Come in the renders panel, sampling, just change the number of samples. Uh, so I guess 200 samples works best for this kind of scene because I use 200 samples and I don't see much noise also, so it looks good. So let's use 200 samples and then we'll go to the compositor just to add in some two to three nodes and we'll see uh, how it looks after. Of his rendering is completed the rendering is finished and um, yeah it looks good you know it depends on the waves also how it looks I guess uh, I should have changed a bit more setting for that waves but it's okay you know experiment with that cube a bit more with that wave modifier but still it looks good we need to make it a bit more brighter and one more thing which I forgot to tell you was it's good I use some light color uh, at the top uh, for the top text and the a bit more darker the same shade uh, for the bottom text so it looks really good 
So let's now change to be the node editor and then vendor layers, check use nodes and backdrop. So I'll move that a bit and file use uh, file append. And I'm just gonna append photo editing nodes. So photo editing nodes is a collection of nodes uh, which you know make the compositor more easy and fun to use. Uh, you can download it for free, the link will be in the description. So I'm just gonna press Ctrl, Shift and left click on the render layers node just to add in a viewer node. So let's start by adding in uh, RGB curves not to make it more brighter. So Shift A, color RGB curves, place it here, increase the this curve a bit that's too much a bit more or less it's fine I'm just gonna place it over here add in a vignette node which comes with the photo editing nodes pack so you need to download it uh, uh, so if you come in the group section by pressing shift A you'll see this it's, you will see these new nodes over here a vignette just gonna place it here opacity to be around about 0.3 not much 0.3 to 0.4 I'll make the scene a bit more brighter, I believe. Yeah, it should be fine. Bit, yeah, that's fine. And then I'm gonna add in a temperature node. So press Shift A, group, temperature. Um, decrease the coolness to be zero. We are gonna make the warmth to be at another 0.2. Or 2.25, let's see, 0.25. Uh, or yeah, I'll use 0.3 itself. Actually, that's fine. Let's see. Yeah, that's fine. Make it point three. That's, uh, that's fine. I increase the brightness a bit. And what is that? Okay, so the rendering is finished. I mean, the compositing is finished. Let's connect this RGB goes to the composite node for the final uh, output. Press Ctrl S to save it and I'm gonna come to the UV image editor. So this is the render result. If I change it to be the viewer node, now I can see the final render. It looks good now after compositing. So as a text effect guys, the modifier was the main thing, how you know you can cut out the uh, text using the Boolean modifier, you can use the wave modifier to you know, get the waves. So it's all just about that and I hope you all liked this tutorial and you found something useful in it uh, hopefully and uh, if you want more tutorials you can subscribe and uh, thanks for watching and uh, do subscribe and leave a comment